And even who's used Windows, especially older version, is probably familiar with the dreaded DLL error when you are in the middle of trying to do something. Although DLL files seem to be important, given how much window complains when one is broken or missing, it's not exactly obvious what they are, so let's explain why they are a big deal. DLL stands for Dynamic Link Library, but don't mistake them for collection of Zelda. And the reason they are called libraries is that DLL contains shared code that multiple programs can link to and use, kind of like how real libraries contain shared books. But, but DLLs, but DLLs have an important feature that books don't. Several programs can use one at the same time. And once a DLL is loaded into a certain space in memory, any program that needs the code inside can request access to that memory space without the DLL having to be loaded over and over again. A good and simple example of this is this DLL file, which contains the code for bringing up a Windows pop-up dialog. Since so many programs use this functionality, it makes sense for this code to be included in Windows as a DLL instead of fighting it into every program from scratch. Another good example is the device driver, which is the code that allows Windows and other programs to communicate properly with hardware drivers often take the form of but they can appear as .sys file in Windows Explorer, which allows multiple applications to access your GPU, keyboard, or printer, its device at a time. And because DLLs are only loaded up when program specifically asks for them, every time a program starts, they also prevent your RAM from filling up with tons of unnecessary code. This modularity means that new functionality such as game updates or support for different languages can be added to older programs simply by writing new DLLs rather than having to modify the program itself. That's not only more, but you don't run the risk of advertently breaking the code of the main executable. But if DLLs are such a good idea, why are they are so notorious in creating problems often referred to DLL hell? So one big reason DLL cause problem is that when an application depends on a lot of DLLs, it also means bad applications has many possible points of failure. If a DLL gets modified, there's no way for a program that loads up the DLL to ensure that the new code is. And if isn't the problem you want, they'll often simply crash. You see, some programs will go messing around with DLLs in a way that they shouldn't. An installer, for example, may decide to modify a DLL in a way that helps that specific application, but can cause errors in possibly many other programs that need the same DLL, but aren't compatible with the modified. For a long time, Microsoft expected third-party software developers to verify that any DLL installed, especially if the override existing ones, would comply with acceptable would comply with accepted standards, but needless to say with the developers typically more concerned about making sure their own software works, it often simply didn't happen. And, and programs kept installing troublesome DLLs with, mercifully this problem has mitigated to a larger extent in more recent versions of Windows. Microsoft has locked down system DLLs so that third-party application can't mess with them unless they have actually been authorized by Microsoft itself. Windows can now also track DLL installations to prevent to unknown DLLs from making their way onto the system, as well as to allow two different versions of DLL to exist simultaneously to prevent programs that rely on the older version from breaking. And with the modern PCs having a lot more memory than the computers of the 90s and early 2000s, the memory limitations that necessitated DLLs in the past aren't as prevalent today, meaning that the modern programs often don't rely on DLLs nearly as much, maybe stuffing 64 gigs of RAM in your personal rig. Wasn't such a big mistake after all, but you know what is a big mistake? Not liking this video and subscribing.